In this libgdx tutorial, I'll be showing you a simple example of how to use drag and drop. So first of all, why don't I show you um, a demo of what we're going to be doing. So here we have uh, a libgdx uh, window program running. And inside there, we have two windows. And we have a basket uh, here and a, a merchant shop, for example, here. And what we can do is drag the apple from here and put it into the merchant shop. And uh, we can drag it back. And if we uh, drag and drop outside of the uh, either of these, it will return the apple to wherever it came from. So in that case, it returns it here. And if we drag it over here and then don't drop it into this one, but over here, it will return there. So now let's look at the code behind this. So I have a very simple libgdx desktop setup here. So uh, when you go to set up the program, I only picked desktop and excluded iOS and Android and HTML. So what we have here is the default desktop launcher. Uh, nothing much here um, special. I just set the uh, window size, the name and standard uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, then we have two classes. Um, so first of all, I have a custom window class, and this is just to make the demo look pretty. So basically, I extend the window class and um, give the window style and the close buttons uh, image. So that's what made it look pretty in the demo. And, um, and it has a method in here just to close the window down if we went want to. Then we have some assets up here. So just a simple picture of an apple. And then as you saw those, those windows, here's the main background and here's the close button. So let's look at the main code behind this. Um, and it's pretty simple. So this is just a standard uh, display class extends application adapter <coughs> set up by default when you um, create a libgdx project. So we've just uh, expanded the code in here. So we have a create method. And in here, we basically first of all create the two windows that you saw. So one I called basket, which holds the apple initially. And then one is like a merchant shop that you would say be selling the apples to. Then I create the apple image and we add the apple uh, to the um, basket window. And I then set the apples user object to the basket. And you'll see why we do that later. So basically we're storing within the apple, which basket it's in. Um, then uh, create a stage and add our two uh, baskets and uh, merchant windows to the stage. And then we have the input pro processor so we can get the mouse clicks. And then we drag onto the main part of this tutorial, which is drag and drop. So first of all, you create a drag and drop object. And then what you need to do um, is add a source and add some targets. So we've got two targets here. One is the, uh, the merchant, which is one of the windows, and then the basket, which is where the apple started from. So in the add source, um, we basically going to say that the apple is a, a drag and drop um, item. And there's two, two um, methods we need to override uh, within here. One is your drag start. Um, so basically when you click on the um, apple, it will drop into this event. And the first thing it will do, uh, first thing we do is create a payload. So uh, a new drag and drop payload. Then we add the Apple, which in this case uh, we can get by using just get actor to the payload. Now I then add that actor to the stage and I will show you why I had to do this. It's a bit of a hack. Uh, I'll explain uh, my reasonings behind that in a little bit. And then we set the, the Apple position. Now this set drag out to position isn't actually um, the true position is basically the position relative to the mouse. 
So in this case, to get it to look uh, like you're actually dragging the apple with the mouse, I basically set the actor, uh, in this case the apple, to be exactly in the middle of the mouse pointer. And um, I, this is kind of linked to this uh, line here, which are, uh, like I said, I will cover again later. And then you just need to return the payload uh, by default. And the other method you need to override is the drag stop. So this is basically um, the event when the um, this is this event is triggered when you stop dragging. So basically, drop the item. Now, if the uh, target is null, so basically is not one of these two targets, what I actually do is I return the apple to the original window that it came from. And this is why I stored that window position. Uh, that's why, and that is why I stored the the window object in the get user object, so I know which one to return it to. And then we have our two targets. So uh, the first one is the actual merchant window. And uh, so we add target, um, we say what the target is going to be. And again, you have to override uh, two methods. So the first one is, is drag. In this case, I'm not doing anything, but basically as you're dragging the, the apple across the, the screen, you uh, could do something. So for example, maybe you have a message come up, maybe you have some special effect coming up, you know, making the apple glow or something. Um, and that get called as you're dragging the item across the, the screen. And then we actually have the drop onto the target. So in this case, uh, we get the payload, um, which is our apple, and we add it to the window, which is our merchant. And then I set the apple user object to the merchant so that we can drag it back again. And it knows uh, where it came from if we drag it into uh, a space between the two windows. And then we do the same for the basket. So the basket, the, the position the apple originally came from can also be a valid uh, drop target. Um, of course, um, we start there, but we may want to return it there. So same code, we've got a drag method that we need to override in this case we do nothing again and a, a drop method, same as this one above. So let me um, go back to this line here. And let me show you what happens if I don't add the apple to the stage as we're dragging it. Uh, so let me just comment that line out. And uh, actually, I'll just comment this line out as well. And let's run the demo again. So everything looks the same, but then when I drag the item, you'll see this offset suddenly. Now, I couldn't actually figure out what the problem is here, but I believe it relates to uh, the offset uh, getting its position from the window somehow. Um, so you can still do the drag and drop. It's actually the mouse pointer that needs to be over the object like that. Uh, and then if you go back, you see the apple actually disappears totally. Um, but as long as the mouse pointer is over your target, it will drop in there. So I couldn't figure out what was causing this massive off offset. Um, so what I did to overcome that was basically add these two lines in. So one is to add the actor to the stage, which gave me a lot more control because it added it to the position I picked it up from. Uh, so let's just stop that and run it again. So, so basically now when I start my drag and drop, it actually in the background in the code, the apple is now added to our stage. And I found that gave me a lot more control over the apple and its positioning. And as you can see, um, this line here allows the apple. So even if I grab the apple here, it moves my mouse or moves the apple into the center of the mouse pointer. So it looks, it looks a bit nicer. So I hope you found that useful. Please uh, post any comments in the section below. And if you uh, know how to resolve the issue I found here that uh, would prevent me having to basically add the apple to the stage to get its position correct, uh, that would be great. Hope you enjoyed this. More to come.